towards you, Lord God. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that we will open up our mouths, Lord God, begin to speak well of you, Lord God. We ask right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that this is time that we set apart holy for you, Lord God, to forget about all the things, Lord God, that we've endured through the day or the week, Lord God, but that we would, Lord God, focus 100% on you, Lord God. We lift up our cups asking you to fill it to the full on this evening, Lord God. We, Lord God, have an intent to come to be restored, Lord God, to be refreshed, Lord God. And God, moreover, we come to give your name praise, honor, and glory, Lord God. We come, Lord God, to exalt you and to tell you, Lord God, that you are the great I am, that you are first and foremost in our lives. And Father, we just ask right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you would remind us of your word, Lord God, that says, Lord God, surely you do nothing on earth without first revealing it to your prophets. And so, God, we do decree and declare right now in the name of Jesus a prophetic outpouring, Lord God, in our ministry, Lord God. We ask right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, like the dew in the morning that you would just rest on us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for flowing freely in the prophetic, Lord God, Lord God, and Bishop Dramon James and Prophetess Keisha James, God. We ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you would keep their hands to the plow Lord God that you would help Lord God be their sustenance Lord God begin Lord God to whisper in their ear Lord God and tell them Lord God the exact thoughts and plans that you have for them Lord God so that they may be encouraged Lord God in their pastoral ship we ask right now in the name of Jesus Lord God that we make preaching and teaching easy for them Lord God we do decree and declare that we are mature in the faith Lord God and mature in the things of you Lord God and that we Lord God have an intent to hold our own selves accountable, Lord God. God, you th we thank you for your word that says confess your sins one to another, Lord God. And God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you're making ways, Lord God, for us, Lord God, to be able, Lord God, to sharpen one another as is iron, Lord God. We ask right now in the name of Jesus, you would give us a spirit of want to do right, God. We ask right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that we want to be held accountable. And Father, we ask right now that we lift up every single person to you in the mighty name of Jesus Lord God we do decree and declare Lord God that a spirit of isolation is not their portion Lord God we ask right now in the name of Jesus Lord God that they Lord God would begin to develop such a hunger and a thirst after the things of you God we ask in the name of Jesus Lord God that you Lord God will replace everything that's not like you on the inside of them God we're asking right now that for a spirit of loneliness Lord God that you give them fullness of joy Lord God we thank you Lord God that where they're frustrated, Lord God, distracted, Lord God, and Lord God, dismayed, Lord God, that you, Lord God, would be the peace, Lord God, in the middle of whatever storm that they may face. And God, I do decree and declare over their lives, Lord God, that they have accountability, that they, Lord God, are striving, Lord God, towards perfection in you. And Father, we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that every marriage is blessed and set apart, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that the oil of, the, of your anointing is flowing freely through every marriage. And we ask right now that let there be, Lord God, submissiveness between between the husband and the wife. Let there be, Lord God, open communication, Lord God. Let there be an abundance of love, Lord God, that your word tells us covers a multitude of sin. And Father, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that all of our relationships will be healthy, Lord God, inside the body, inside the home, and definitely inside of our minds. For Lord God, many of us are being tormented within ourselves. But God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that we, Lord God, can receive the mind of Christ, Lord God. And God, we receive it freely in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that a focus and attention will come, Lord God, upon your people, Lord God, that we set our affections on things that are above, Lord God. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that Lord God, no matter what comes our way, as your word says that our eyes are set upon you. We thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you are the mark that we are striving towards. And Father, we lift up, Lord God, our leader. Bishop Jamon James and Prophet is Keisha James. We ask, Lord God, that your residue will be upon them, Lord God. We thank you that they are holy and set apart. We thank you that your hand is on them, Lord God, on their businesses, on their family, and in this house. And Father, we love you. We ask that you will be glorified on tonight in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, lift your voice and give God glory. Come on, if you're excited about Jesus tonight, open your mouth and bless his name. For I was glad when they said unto me, 
come and let us go into the house of the Lord. If you're excited tonight, open up your mouth. You may not be here physically, but wherever you are, open your mouth and give him glory. Oh, we give you glory, Lord. Come on, lift your voice and saturate wherever you are. Your place of dwelling, come on, saturate it with the glory of the Lord. You are welcome, Jesus. Hey, you are welcome, Jesus. Yeah, you are welcome, Jesus. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Come on, is he welcome tonight? Is he welcome tonight? You are welcome. You are welcome. Our prayer is that you open the eyes of our hearts. We want to see you high and lifted up. We want your glory to fill this temple. Come on, put your hands together. Oh, and help us give glory. We bless your name, Jesus. Hey, anybody come to bless him? Anybody ready to bless him? Come on, let's bless him together. Hey. Say holy. 
of joy. I thank you right now. Hallelujah. Lord, continue to make ways out of no ways. Continue to show us how great and mighty you are. In the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of everything falling apart, we know, God, that you're still able to do above and beyond what we can even ask or think according to the power that works on the inside of us. For that reason, we glorify you. For that reason, we magnify you. For that reason, we call you the King of kings and the Lord our Lord. If you're listening under the sound of my voice, open up your mouth and give God the highest praise, which is hallelujah. Come on and shabak him. Come on and glorify him. Come on and magnify him. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Lift up your voice. Come on, lift up your voice and give God the highest praise. For hallelujah is the highest praise. 
No longer are you moved by what you see, but you move based on what the Word of God says. And the Bible says, glory be to God to cause us to triumph. You're going to triumph over every situation. Therefore, in advance, you give God praise. I need you to stand on your feet if you're at home. I need you to stop what you're doing wherever you are and just take the next 30 seconds and give God a right now praise. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But you serve a God that come to give you life and it more abundantly. I dare you for the next 15 seconds to continue to give God praise in spite of the hell in high water. Come on and glorify Him. Come on and magnify Him. Come on and let God know that you love Him. Give Him praise. Give Him praise. Give Him praise. Hallelujah. Listen. We're flowing different tonight. I wanted to get the family together because I need you to know that you're in this fourth quarter and things are working in your favor. What the enemy meant for your bad, God is turning around for your good. The Spirit of the Lord told me to tell you that God's leaning in your direction. Amos 9, 13 says it won't be long now. God decrees everything going to happen so fast. Your head going to swim one blessing on the heels of the next. Everywhere you look going to be blessings. I'm here to tell you, you must change your perspective. God sent me to tell you tonight that things are working in your favor. There's going to be glory after this. So we ushered in worship. We ushered in praise. Because the Bible says he inhabits the praise of his people. I want you to prepare your hearts and mind to finish this year strong. No matter how things look, keep focus on God. Don't worry about the sideshows. Start focusing on God. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Now listen, everybody that's watching, all the partners, all the family and friends that's watching. My wife and I, we're supposed to have been right now in Atlanta at a family faith conference. And we're here and we're going to scream into their service in a moment. My wife and I, we're going to be ministering, even though we're ministering you still in Virginia, we're going to, real quick, we're going to, we're going to by, by text through technology, we're going to go and send ourselves over to Atlanta. Right, you're going to stay right where you are. And then in a moment, we're going to minister to you by way of Atlanta, even though we're here in Virginia. Somebody shout technology. And so we're going to do that in a moment. The Lord has given my wife and I an assignment tonight um, to help, with, help marriages tonight. And so we're going to send you to this, faith, um, this conference. It's the 2020 Family Conference. It's the conference for destiny, building a family of faith. And so we're about to send you into that in a moment. I need all our partners to listen to me. Right now, my team going to put the ways that you continue to support the ministry and so right there on your screen there's ways that you can give you can give and continue to sow into your church now so just get that information and go ahead and do that in Jesus name we're going to prepare now to really send you over um, and, and to the Atlanta studio praise the Lord we'll say it that way and then we're going to minister from there in Jesus name so I need y'all to do me a favor my wife now we're going to gear up and preach we got our set already set up and we're going to tune in in Atlanta and they're going to beam us right back here to Virginia you in Jesus name so I need y'all to do me a favor follow the ways you can give you can do text to give mobile giving you can give on our website you can give on the app whatever you need to do to give but support the church I'm going to pray and then I'm believing by faith that you're going to obey God and give I need every partner every friend everyone to give tonight somebody shout give tonight and I want you and I need you to give your best seat give your best seat somebody say I'm going to give my best seat now I'm repeat out to me this seat going to leave my hand but never my life it's going to go into my future and assist me with some future events that I know not of. But God, you said in your word that when we give, you cause men to give back to us a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, share men, given to our bosom. Therefore, right now, we believe God is raising up somebody, somewhere to use the power, their ability, their influence to help us in Jesus' name. So I need y'all to go ahead and do me a favor. I need y'all to give now, give now, give now. And stay where you are because we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit one button and we're going to send you to Atlanta. 
Y'all hear me? We're going to hit one button, and you're going to go right to Atlanta, and then we're going to be up there in a few minutes. I got a dear friend, Pastor Carl Miller, a, a, a former a former a, 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 a Atlanta Falcon um, player. He's right now, he's ministering right now, and after him, um, then they're going to sing y'all into our session, and we're going to help you with your marriage. So I need y'all to get everybody you know um, to jump on this live right now, jump on Facebook, jump on our streaming platform, because we want, if you got some things going on in your marriage and your marriage has been under attack, or it's under attack right now, I need you to get everybody um, to come. I believe there's a word from the Lord, and the Lord has ordained and anointed my wife and I to help marriages, so I need you to do that now. I need you to spread the word um, that the man and woman of God is going to be a part of, they're part of a faith conference and it's building families of faith and we're about to be doing it in a few moments. We're about to be live. But I'm going to tune you in around. I'm tune you in now and let you hear my friend as he's ready to close out before my wife and I come up. So I need y'all to do me a favor. Give now. Say it with me. Give now. I don't see I, I don't see y'all on my phone right now, but I need you to shout it. I need you to type it in. We give it now. We give it now. Support your church. Support your church in the name of Jesus. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Now, don't leave us now. I need y'all to stay here and go to Atlanta with me real quick. And then my wife and I, we're going to minister the word of God. And then we'll release together. Amen. Y'all in the comfort of your own home, so you don't have to go nowhere. We're going to hit the button and you stay right where you are. But I need you to give now. And my team are going to switch over. Team, are you ready? Let's see, get this first, get this right first. When we get the marriage relationship together, then the family will be together. Watch this. When we have strong families, then you will end up with strong churches. When you have strong churches, you will end up with strong communities. When you have strong communities, you'll end up with strong cities and strong states. Hallelujah. Everything narrows its way all the way back down to the relationship between husband and wife. Amen. The blessings of priorities, when we put first things first, when we get these things in order, blessings begin to flow. Let me share with you some of the blessings of having right priorities. When my priorities are right, I'm better equipped to overcome obstacles. That's right. When my priorities are right, I can overcome obstacles because I know what's most important. When my priorities are right, I am better able to resolve conflict. Hallelujah. Because I can begin to look at things and say, no, 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 these are the things that are the most important. When my priorities are right, I am better able to eliminate non-essentials. Hallelujah. That's not important. That's not important. No, no, no. This is what's important. When my priorities are right, I am better able to expose and nullify distractions. I start saying, no, this is not even important. Because I got my priorities together, I can look at things and identify the things that come into my life that are present to be a distraction. Satan is going to send distractions to the husband and wife. But when my priorities are right, it's easy 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 for me to expose them and nullify them when my priorities are right I am better able to receive and allow the blessings of God to flow in abundance father I got it Lord you're number one it's amazing when we make God number one Lord my spouse is number two it's amazing when we have those priorities right now the blessings of God can begin to flow glory to God the Bible says that upon the marriage the, the unity of, uh, of marriage that God has commanded a blessing blessings begin in the flow when we prioritize things the right way. When my priorities are right, I am better able to take in supernatural accelerated recovery when there has been a loss. That means that when things do go wrong, I can accelerate the, the, the recovery supernaturally when I have right and correct priorities. Jesus says, in this world, in this life, 
You will have tribulation. There will be disappointments. There's going to be uh, uh, attacks. There's going to be things that go wrong. There's going to be things that you do wrong. There's going to be things that people do wrong to you. He says, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. So we know that we're going to experience challenges, but when my priorities are right, I can accelerate the recovery supernaturally. Hallelujah. I want to give you three things to do to establish correct priorities. We've been talking about priorities and prioritization. Let me give you three things to do uh, to uh, establish correct priorities. Number one, you need to list them. List the most important priorities in your life in order of importance. List the most, um, uh, most important priorities in your life in order of importance. Number two, prove Prove those priorities in real ways. I'll explain that in a moment. And then number three, prepare to protect those priorities the rest of your life. You need to list them, prove them, and then protect them. Most lists, first of all, when you make a list, you know, it, it, the, the, when you make a list, that lets at first helps you to visualize and see things for what they really are. And then generally speaking, the, you know, we really only write down things that are important. So making a list uh, is really important. And most lists could look something like this. Number one is God. God. Seeking and serving him personally. That's, that's number one. Seeking and serving him personally. Not through my mom and them. Not through, not through my church and say, well, I'm a part of grace. And as long as I'm sitting in the pew, I'm good. No, 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 no. You need to seek him and, and, uh, uh, and serve him personally. Serve him by serving at grace. Serve him by serving on your job. Hallelujah. Serve him by serving at home. Praise God. Amen. Number two, God's number one. Number two would be my spouse. Hallelujah. Those of you who are looking to be married, this is how it goes. The spouse is to be the second priority in your life. Number three is children. What? Children, pastor. That's right. The children do not come before the spouse. The spouse was before the children. Hallelujah. It is God, spouse, and then children if you have any. Thirdly is church. What? Church, that's right. Church is the way that I serve God in, in the, in the, within my community. This is where I engage, hallelujah, the Lord and how God has chosen to advance his message in the earth. That's right. God, spouse, children, church, and then extended family and friends. Then extended family and special friends, I should say. Hallelujah. After that comes work and career. Pastor, you are kidding me. I thought work and career would be higher on the list. No, 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 no. Listen, family, spouses, children, friends do not exist for the work or the career. The career exists, the work and the career exist for the family, exist for God. They exist for the children. They exist for extended friends and family. Hallelujah. No, we, we don't get, we don't, we don't, we don't have the family serving the job. The job serves as a means for God to supply and meet our needs so that we can take care of the family. Lastly will be hobbies and, uh, and, and other interests. Praise the Lord. So no, my hobby doesn't come before my spouse. My hobby doesn't come before the children. My hobby doesn't come before family and friends. My hobby does not come before me serving at grace. Hallelujah. There should be no empty positions in our ministries across the world because they, they should be constantly being filled with people who have prioritized their life and plugging in to where God wants them to serve. Hallelujah. You've got to prove your priorities and you prove them by actions. That's how you do it. You prove them by the action steps that you take. Listen to me, men, I want to give you something. I want to give you something. Ladies, this is just for the men. Men need to understand that women do not measure love by what they hear. Yeah, they want to hear. Now, now it is important, now, although it is very important for you to speak loving and, and affirming words to them. I'm not saying that is important. They need to hear those things. They need to hear them often. Uh, but her ultimate standard in measuring uh, and, and measuring for love and how you love her is what you will give up to meet her needs. What will you sacrifice to meet her needs? Otherwise, yeah, baby, I love you. Okay. Okay, I need to see what you're going to do. How important am I to you? That's what she's thinking. How important am I to you compared to other things in your life? 
If a man sacrifices his wants and desires to meet his wife's needs, then she feels love. No, he sacrificed some stuff for me. He came for me. Glory to God. If he will not sacrifice for her, all of the words in the world cannot convince her that he really loves her if he's not willing to give up anything for her. When we reprioritize our lives and we set aside other things for our spouses, praise the Lord, they know that they are loved. My husband gave these things up for me. Men, you need to understand. Remember, you used to do that. Praise God. We used to take the wives out or when we were dating them, take them out and we would sacrifice time. We would sacrifice money. Come on, somebody. I know them ladies are giving me an amen. I know y'all. Come on, ladies. I know y'all giving me an amen right now. They would sacrifice time. They would sacrifice money. They would take you to a nice dinner and so on and so forth. They would take the, listen, the boys would call. They'd be like, no, nah, man, I'm hanging out with my girl right now. <laughs> yeah, we'll hang out later but right now I'm hanging out with my girl sacrificing time to be with them sacrificing resources to be with them so that they will feel love when you when, listen when you quench your 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 fire your anger and all those kind of things and you set certain things aside and you're willing to change for them sacrificing the way you used to do things in order to honor them man that's when they come on ladies that's when you that's when you feel love that ladies I need y'all to type amen in the chat box right now hallelujah now Women, I'm going to, men, I'm going to talk to the women for a moment. Talk to the women for a moment. Women, it's the same thing with you, but it's a little different. Women need to understand the same thing about their husbands. A man will know you love him when you give him the energies and the attention that he deserves. Your husband feel the same way about you being too tired to give him what he needs. Your back hurt. You have a headache. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. He, when, when, you start, when you start copping out, when his needs are unmet, he feels the same way. The answer is putting action into words. How do I prove my priorities? When I begin to put actions into words. I, I literally carry out the actions that dictate or state or echo the fact that you are a priority. If you do not put actions or act on, on your convictions by reprioritizing your life and demonstrating that, uh, that you love God and wife and husband and family, words will do very little to convince them that they are loved. Actions speak louder than words. So I need to make a list. Uh, uh, I need to uh, list my priorities. I need to prove those priorities. And the last, the last principle is I need to protect those priorities. Once you make your list of priorities, once you prove your priorities, man, this, then you must protect your priorities. Hallelujah. Wife, with, with, with life's demands constantly bearing down on you, protecting your priorities is going to become more challenging than you ever imagined. It's going to be extremely important. The, the job starts demanding more. The bills start demanding more. The children's recreation starts demanding more. Amen. Friends and extended family start demanding more. Career starts demanding more. You must understand you've got to protect those priorities priorities or you will experience perishing once you decide what they are be prepared to protect them for the rest of your life hallelujah one way to do that is to look at your time look at your energy and look at where your money is being spent because it's easy to see that money is a limited asset if you look at this in the form of money if you think about this from a money perspective you know that money is a limited asset resource. It's a limited asset. And you can easily understand that you must learn to budget your money uh, uh, if you want to get the best and most out of your money. So it is with time and energy as it pertains to relationship. It would be foolish to spend all your money on extravagant extravagance or foolishness. <laughs> so it is with time and energy that they must be budgeted just as you do with your money. If God is your first priority and your spouse is second, listen to me carefully, your spouse should always get the next best thing right after God. 
They should always get the next best right after God. It is true that we grow. It is true that we change over time. That's why it's important that we stay engaged with one another and that we make sure that our spouse is the number one priority. Hallelujah. This is how healthy relationship is built and established. This is how healthy families are built and established. Amen. Let me go over here and talk to you guys real quick. Is, is your priority really God? Are you a tither? Are you a tither? Do you tithe? Do you support what God is doing? Is he your number one priority? We can look at your money and see. Do you spend time with God? Time in worship, time in prayer, uh, time, uh, time serving God in the kingdom, time studying the word of God. Amen. Time listening to God impart into you. Hallelujah. Is your wife or your husband, your spouse, the next priority on your list? Do they get the lion's share of the rest of your time, your energy, and your resources? Those things should always be geared towards home and focused on home. Hallelujah. Then your children, praise God, then your church. Are you showing up to support your ministry? Are you showing up to support your church? Remember this, the bride of Christ is the church. The Bible says that he's coming back for his bride. Amen. When we do not support our church and our ministry, is it possible that this could be more detrimental or more painful to God's heart than we once thought? Thinking that, oh, it's just the church. No, the church is the bride of Christ. I don't know about you, but if there was anybody who was in my family, anybody who I called friend and I discovered that they were mistreating my wife, I might feel some kind of way. I wonder if Jesus feels some kind of way because we have not prioritized his church. God first, your foremost relationship, your wife or husband second, your spouse, your children third, and then your church, the bride of Christ. Let's get involved with what God is doing and let's make a decision now that we're going to reprioritize our life and we are going to bring families together and build a legacy of faith. Grace, I love you. God bless you. Thank you for allowing me to, to minister to you. I just want to pray over you real quick. I want to pray over relationships, pray over marriages right now, pray over families and situations right now. I'm telling you that when we release our faith this way, I know you've been taught that by Dr. Chappelle, but when we release our faith this way, amazing things happen. I believe that God hears us when we pray. And if he hears us, I believe he's going to give us the answer that we need. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus name, we thank you for this word that has gone forth. I thank you, Lord God, that you that uh, this word has fallen on the good ground of our heart. And we are even now, Father, thinking through our priorities and reprioritizing our life. Father, in the areas where we have not made you number one, we repent and ask for your forgiveness and we reprioritize our lives now. Father, that you are our number one priority and you are first and foremost. Father, we also repent for not prioritizing our spouses, God. And we pray that you forgive us, God, of that sin. And we thank you, Lord God, that even as we reprioritize our lives, that we will experience supernatural accelerated healing and recovery in our relationships. Thank you for showing us how to build healthy families. Thank you for showing us how to build healthy relationships. Thank you for showing us how to operate in relationship and family your way. Father, we love you and we thank you, almighty God. And we declare that our relationships and our families are healed and healthy and prosperous. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you, Grace. We'll see you next time. What's going on, everybody? It's your you pastor, Pastor Kimo. Thank you so much for joining us for today's Faith Family Conference. So we're done with day one, but we want to make sure that you guys go to the breakout session. So all you have to do is go to the app, My Grace Rocks, on the Apple Store or the Google Play Store. Download the app. Go to the Watch Live tab at the bottom and choose what class you want to be a part of. It's super easy. Three steps. Download the app. Go to the watch live, pick a class. Look, I'm with you, Pat.
Pastor Pastor Kimo. Thank you guys so much for joining us for day one of the family conference. See you guys tomorrow. Hey family. Right now I'm going to give you a quick rundown on how the breakout rooms are going to work. One, make sure you have the My Grace Rocks app downloaded to your phone. This app is available in the Apple Store and in Google Play. Two, once you have the app downloaded, open the app and then go under the Watch Live tab. In the Watch Live tab, you'll see all the breakout rooms listed. You'll see singles, married, the element, and kids drop. After the conclusion of the main portion of this conference, you'll be able to click on the breakout rooms that best suits you. See, it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So what you're gonna do is one, make sure you have the My Grace Rocks app downloaded. Two, click on the Watch Live tab. And three, click on the breakout room that best suits you. Turn your, turn your volume down. There you go. Amen. 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 Hold on one second. Y'all won't be able to do that. Amen. They was trying to bring in the sanctuary. We have people in the sanctuary. Y'all just had to go off, guys. Um. Give me one second. Amen. Okay, is that better? Is that better? You up, you up here tonight. Um, we, we understand um, that you're up here. And I happen to stand, but I'm going up in spirit. What's the marriage conference? Uh, can y'all mute? Can we? 
Um, so we want to make sure that we um, spend time really building you up in your marriage. So if you can, and if, if you're able to, to just turn your screens on so we can be able to identify um, you. And then do me a favor. Um, while we're dialoguing and conversating with you guys, if you guys can um, send your questions in. My wife and I want to make sure we can answer all the questions possible. We have like 33 minutes left um, to do this. We want to make sure we respect the time um, from these amazing pastors. And we want to make sure that we uh, use our time wisely. So do me a favor. Um, if you have any questions, I need you to go ahead and start sending your questions in. We're about to get into what we believe the Spirit of the Lord um, had us to prepare um, to help you guys out. Such an honor. We need to mute some people. Um, it's such an honor to be here. What I want to do, we're going to open up in prayer, and then we want to do all we possibly can um, to help you guys through marriage through your marriage, and then answer whatever questions we can in a timely fashion. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I glorify your name. I thank you for this time around your word. I thank you for these amazing people around the globe that you allow us, Father God, to spend these next precious moments with. Because you know what's name by name and situation by situation, I say, Lord, have your way. Touch the hearts and minds of your people as we begin to help and mentor and give them instructions and information, Father God, to better their marriage and enhance, Father God, the vision of their marriage so they can win in every area of their marriage, Lord. We pray, Father God, that you allow this to happen. In your precious name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Baby, you want to say something real quick before we get going? Amen. Oh, you don't need a mic. <laughs> she thinks she's in service. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am so excited to be with you guys on this evening. And I thank you so very much uh, for having, letting us be a part of your conference. God bless you. We're excited and we're going to get right into what we're going to be talking about this evening. And, Amen. I, and the question is raised, why did I get married? Um, and, and this is a question we all got to ask each ourselves. Why did we get married? Did we get married um, for a, a selfish personal reason or do we get married um, because we, you know, we had nothing else to do or we got married because we found our life partner and our desire is to go down this journey, not alone, but with a life partner. And with that life partner, you got to understand that you got to come into what we call partnership. And that's why I thank God for my wife. Um, a little history about us. We've been, um, we've been uh, in a relationship for 33 years, been married. 20, I mean, 31 years, been married um, 25 years, um, September. And so we so excited because it was not always easy, but we had to learn through mistakes. And if we can help you tonight um, to advance your marriage, be better in a better place in your marriage, you can learn from our mistakes. And one of our mistakes was that when we got in our marriage, we had the same questions. Why do we get married? What is this marriage thing all about? We was young. Um, we was young. I think I was 19. She was 21 when we got married. So we was real young when we got married. But we understood um, that it was not to complete each other. It was to complement one another. And so partnership is very well, we necessary. We that later, not in the beginning. Yeah, we understood that later. <laughs> and so partnership is the state of relationship with two or more individuals who makes a conscious, calculated commitment to each other around the common cause. Again, when I'm in partnership, it's a state in my relationship with two individuals. They come together collectively to make a calculated, committed decision around a common cause. That common cause is that in this marriage, we're going to win. How many of y'all on, on, on the Zoom tonight understand because you're on Zoom tonight, you're already winning? You made a decision tonight that I'm going to step up my comfort zone. I'm going to get in the God zone. I'm going to do the will of God. And my desire, my plan, and my purpose from this day forward is to make sure I'm in partnership. Now, partnership cannot be one-sided. I'm often asked, well, what is partnership? When you look at partnership, we must understand this, this perspective. That if I'm married, it's not 50-50. It's 100-100. You got to understand as a believer, as a child of God, you can't act like the world. You can't think like the world. No, you're not a part-time husband. You're not a part-time wife. You are all in husband. You are all in wife. And so what you have to do, you have to make the decision that I'm going all in. I don't care if you trip and bump your head and act crazy. I'm still going to get my 100% because if this thing does not work, I gave you my all. But you cannot and you should not as a believer step back and take, the, take this approach that I'm not going to give my all. You're not doing what you're supposed to do. So guess what I'm not going to do? I don't care. My wife, we had to learn this early on, that baby, I'm not going to sit here 
and, and, and act crazy because you're acting crazy. Somebody got to be the bigger person. Somebody got to understand if we're going to win that, guess what? One day I may be at a, in a high place and, and you're at a low place, but the next day it can shift and you're at a high place, I'm at a low place, but we got to complement each other. We got to work together. We got to be in partnership and cover each other so we can have this common cause that we're going to win. And it has to be mutually, mutually beneficial. That is not just personal gain for me, but it's personal gain for us. Because in marriage, it's not about me. It's not about her. It's about us. And if we're going to get where we need to be at, we got to make sure that we be in partnership. You want to add on to that, babe? I do. I think that in this season, we are in a season where we have to understand no matter how long you've been married, any length of time, if you've been married, it is time to fight. And you have to be determined that you are going to fight for your marriage. You're going to fight for your family. You're going to fight for your children. You're going to fight for your finances. You're going to fight for your ministry. You're going to fight for your anointing. This is a season where we have to be determined that we're not just throwing in the towel because things don't go the way we plan. We have to be flat footed, standing on the word of God, knowing that the word of God cannot return void, but it's going to accomplish that which he sends it out to do. And so if that is going to happen i gotta put on my gear That's glory it. to That's god good. it's time to put on your weapons uh, the weapons of your warfare are not carnal but mighty through god to, to the pulling down of That's strongholds it. casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god you are going to have to fight you ought to type that in the message and say it is time to fight i it's am not giving up no matter what has happened i am determined that god is going to work it out now watch this if god's gonna work it out first he gotta get in your stuff come on because sometimes you know we have a tendency to put the finger at the spouse and think the spouse come needs on. all the work but no god is trying to get your attention you need some work done to you you're gonna have to close your mouth and you're gonna have to be silent you're gonna have to swallow that elephant and be quiet and come let on. the lord work on you all of the nagging that's it. And Listen, you know what's amazing? Go ahead. What, one thing I, I, I trip out a lot is that when we point the finger at our spouse, there's still three pointing back at us. Absolutely. And so while we're trying to blame it all on our spouse, and the Lord told me this one day. I remember I used to try to blame my wife for everything and, and you know, win this partnership, right? And the Lord said, he says, son, let me ask you a question. He says, you keep complaining about her. He's, and, and this is what the Lord told me. He says, but your choice, <laughs> your choice was based on Watch this now. I want to help you all out. Was how smart you thought you was in the moment. And so, see, I made a choice to marry my wife. And now I'm telling God that she got all the issues. Okay. But, see, I got to understand that when I married my, my wife, it was a decision okay. I made. And my wife cannot be always the problem. I had to sit down and examine myself. And I say, Lord, well, what's really going on? He, chilled, he told me this. He said, son. He says, you're so busy talking about all her faults and you're not even focused on your faults. He said, it's not until you start taking ownership of what you're not doing. He says, and then you see what I'm doing through her. But you're so busy focusing on her, telling me what I, I need to do for her. He says, but how about and what if I do all that for her and now she's moving ahead, but you still stuck. He says, stop focusing on her and focus on you. And then your conversation your words are end up watering her. The things that she's been dealing with, the things that y'all never discussed, because a lot of us, we'll be honest, you got married and you thought you really knew your spouse until you got married to your spouse. When, when you would, <laughs> see, I'm going to say it again. Absolutely. When you got married, you really thought you knew your spouse. Y'all need to be honest with me now. And then the moment you said, I do, it seemed like they offloaded all the baggage and all the stuff. You're like, man, you didn't tell me all this. I did not know your aunt was crazy. Your uncle was crazy. I didn't even know that your stuff, your bills was jacked. I ain't, you didn't tell me none of that stuff. Because see, I, we was dating, but we had no real revelation. Because, see, I, I thought that my intelligence, how I chose who you are, I thought I made the right decision, but I did not spend time really getting to know you because I was drawn emotionally to you because some of us, we got in relationships, not because, you know, we all won't say it and, and we waited. So it was different reasons that we got um, brought into this relationship. And now that you're married, but there's still some things that you have not discussed or worked through that still shows up and haunt you later. And this is why when you become in partnership, my focus, my goal is that we need to walk together. And the Bible says, how can any two walk together unless they're in what? Agreement. 
marriage is about coming into agreement. The power of agreement is so critical. The power of agreement is the real it's really, it's going to be what's going to keep it together. Most relationships fail because communication. And then uh, here we go. A lot of people say it failed because of money. But really, if you broke and you communicate and you broke, then y'all not spending as much. And so guess what? You can work through it. And so the problem is, is that our communication is off. And since our communication is off, and now it messes up everything. But if we're working and conversating and communicating through what we're going through and dealing with, now we know where we are. We're Now we're working together together as partners to be able to pull this thing together to see what's next. But if we're not communicating, your money, your money going to get jacked up. And now I'm going I'm to I'm go ahead and move over to this point because this is very, very important. Most of us is as communication. It's your money. But then I'm going to be honest with you. Let, come a little closer to the screen. It's you being selfish. A lot of us, we're married, but we're selfish. That's good. Go ahead, babe. That's the segue good. for you. Well, my segue was actually I wanted to talk about the communication piece because that is my favorite. You know, sometimes that we, we're in a relationship and we're afraid to talk to our spouses. That's good. We don't know how to talk to our spouses. That's good. You know, we're in a marriage. You're forever learning your spouse. And I, I tell my husband, the older you get, you're starting to change. You're starting to change a little bit, buddy. <laughs> And so you have to learn your spouse. You know, they're not the same that they were 10 years ago when you first married them. And they shouldn't be. And neither are you. And so you have to learn your spouse. So what you say, you can't be nagging at 30 and then still nagging at 40. <laughs> Amen. You got to grow. You got to understand. Once, once you know your spouse, there's certain things you got to, you can't do. You, you got to understand. It's just like more control. Some oh. stuff, you know what buttons to push and you Absolutely. tell me pushing those buttons at a certain age. At a certain age, you need to take the batteries out and leave the remote on the, on, on the, on the table. So then Absolutely. when somebody try to push the remote, it still don't work. It's still don't work. I'm going to help you out. Don't do it. Sometimes you got to understand is that your spouse know the buttons to push and you just need to take the remote, take the batteries out and set it up there and say, you will not push another button on Absolutely. me today. Because uh -oh. the enemy works overtime to try to sabotage the future and try to hinder you. But as a believer, you got to understand, you must set the environment. Yes. You must set the temperature, especially in your That's marriage, right. baby. You're not acting like yourself. You're acting out of character. And I'm not going to let the devil. We got too much we're working on. We believe in God for too much. We plan it and believe in God for a vacation. Now, now watch Go this. Ahead. I hate to interrupt you, but this is a good point Go to bring this up. In the beginning of our marriage, my husband had to teach me how the Bible says, not to let the sun go down on your wrath. Oh, yeah. Listen here, y'all know when we get mad. I'm mad. Don't say nothing to me. And I'll talk to you when I'm ready to talk. And that's how <laughs> it was. he would stay up. He would stay up. And I mean, literally, I roll over two or three o'clock. And when I look, he's sitting up on the side of the bed. What are you I doing? I deal with now? headlights. <laughs> what are you doing? Now? He's like, we ain't get to talk about what we was talking about. And we, I'm not going to bed mad. And I said, well, I, I don't been asleep. We can talk now. <laughs> <laughs> you have to know that even in the midst, this watch this because when the two of you become one, some of their good points rub off on you and Come vice on. versa. And you have to allow that to happen. And now, since time has gone on, I've said. grown to we learn to talk about stuff. Watch this if you have planned to do something throughout the day and your spouse makes you mad, are you supposed to continue to do what you planned to do earlier? Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely, and without bringing up what, what happened, happened. Ooh, so that, you got to be mature for that. that though. You got to be mature say, for that. That takes some growth, man. That takes the power of the Holy Ghost. You know, I'm mad. I can spit fire right now, but we plan to go out to eat, so I'm still going out to eat with you with a smile on my face, and I'm not going to treat you any different. That's good. Okay, or we plan to play in the cookie jar later on. Hey, cookie jar. I'm yeah. just saying. And we, we got grown up. <laughs> These are, this is for Amen. now. Praise you know, Lord. and then put on that red dress. <laughs> And those high heels you, and some of that sweet perfume, you so look good to me. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. And so you have to understand that even in the midst of, I see you waving your hand. That's right. Because listen, even in the midst of you getting upset, you still have to do what you've planned. And so, you know, I think that the communication piece is the major, major, major piece major. that's missing. Sometimes we'd be silent. I remember in the beginning, I would think, you know, uh, that my husband should know certain things. No, no, not if you didn't tell them. 
Hello. Hold on. What's the scripture? Husband, dwell your wife according, according to knowledge. According to knowledge. That your prayers be not hindered. That's right. Look, woman, mm-hmm. wives, you got to give your husband information. You have to give it to him. You can't just expect him. He's not a psychic. He, he, no, 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 no. That's you true. should know. No, 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 no. You need to give me the information. Yes. I need to know why you're acting like that. I need to know why you're tripping. I need to know why I didn't rush home and got here and you look, you're looking like something wrong. What's going on? I didn't talk to you. I didn't text you. Are you ready for me? I didn't do all that stuff. <laughs> and now I get home and you got to add to get I need to know what's going on so I can make some adjustments. Husbands, dwell with your wife according to knowledge that your prayers be not hindered. Men, we need information and we got to start saying, baby, I need some information. I need you to help me understand you. Absolutely. Amen. Praise the Lord. Go ahead, baby. That's good. And so, you know, just keep in mind that even regardless, it, it just leads back to not allowing the sun to go down That's on it. your wrath. That's good. And then, you know, if you if you get so mad that uh, you're hanging out the side of the window Come when on. you're driving down the street. You get so mad that, you know, you put that, my husband said, you put that part, that line in the bed. In the like, bed. Don't, Don't come over here tonight. <laughs> the devil is a lie. Absolutely. You cannot allow the sun to go down on your route. This is a true story. Uh, my husband knew someone who did that and they woke up and their spouse then was Then wake gone. up the next day. And that's, Listen. And that's what I, I, that was the reason I started doing that. Um, you know, as a barber for 29, 30 years, um, I was cutting a client hair and he said that, man, he said, man, my wife was fussing last night and he came crying. I said, what's wrong with you? He said, she didn't wake up this morning. And I said, what? He said, man, he said, my memory is only remembering that we was fussing Absolutely. and did not get a chance to fix it. And after that, I said, you know what? I said, I'm not going to bed another night without me and my wife being in the right standard. I want, yes, I want to be in the right standard with God, but my wife, she's my best friend. Absolutely. My chief joy is to make her happy. And so my thing is, yes, we're going to bump heads. But what my wife and I do to get back to we set a date. Day. I don't know about you guys, um, but we set a date day up every um, every week. We have one day out the week. We have a date day. And then we have a one day. Out, we have a dump. We do not spend every day putting out fires. I'm going to say it again. We do not spend every day putting out fires. We're going to enjoy our life. We made we plant this future together. We're going to work through this thing together. Then, let me, can I say something? Let's talk about the date day. Okay. Everybody should have one. You should plan to date your spouse. Absolutely. Plan to date your spouse. And so our date day is on Wednesdays. And let me tell you something. I get, Women, y'all see y'all more. I y'all more. Anal- y'all, y'all got to give all the details. I said date day <laughs> and I was shifting. No, I She paused go. for date day. Now she's talking about Wednesday and how she do right. it. I was because, trying to say y'all a little bit of time. Because ladies, you have to... Um, Make them remember why they married you. Oh, girl. Huh? Hallelujah. Talk to me, ladies. You have to let them know, remember why they married you That's in right. the first place. All right? So don't be coming with no sagging pants. Glory to God. Come on, looking like... No nun dress. Look, I, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Robert. Thank you, Mr. Robert. He's clapping like, that's right. Amen. Just like they found you, they want you to stay like that. You know, folk get in church and then they... they I you, mean... No, you can't get in on. church and look... No, you... Yeah. No, and, and I'm going to help you out. And we know that folk need to have self-control. But this is why some people got wondering eyes because they wondering. Oh. And, and it's sad. But what you got to do as a believer, you got to get in the place where, hey, guess what? You married me and it's okay for me to sit here and look nice in front of you. Absolutely. Because you don't need to keep... What, what you looking at, baby? If you take that, you you take that, you know, <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Take off that. that, that. <laughs> that, 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 that. Hey, man, that nun dress means you're not getting none. And so you take that off. And then you, you, got, you like my wife said, you got to remind, this is why you married me. And this is why we're going to do life and win life together. My wife, I'm telling you, we enjoy one another. But I'm not going to have my wife right here looking like she didn't fell off a truck. That's not going to happen. My wife can look like the bomb.com. I'm trying to tell you why. That's my joy. My, I want to see my wife happy. It, it's something about when your wife and your husband feel good about themselves, they perform better. They do better. Amen. And it's very important for you to encourage your, your husband, encourage your wife. You know, maybe they don't have the six pack, but they got a keg now. But guess what? You got to say, baby, baby, you still look good, even though you ain't got that six pack no more. But boy, I remember, but you still look, you still my man. And you know, and then I was going to make a point ahead. about the date day go before you go. go ahead. Okay, so the date day in the beginning wasn't as important to him as it was to me. All right, so when you first start out, you know, you still have to keep those line of communication. Listen, our date is to me lunchtime. We're supposed to have our date at lunch. Lunch is at noon, people. Okay, for me, 
All right, I don't want to be eating lunch at two and three o'clock. It's almost going into dinner time. That's a late lunch. We're having a lunch date, so he would be busy at the church. You know, supposed to be coming back to get. She's telling the woman to dwell with Jesus. That's She's telling right. all that. I'm business, telling right. it all. So that <laughs> he was supposed to come back to the house to get me. And it'd be two o'clock. What, what's going on? But I had to allow the Holy she Ghost, did. watch this, to work on me to be able to talk to him instead of being upset. Amen. Because by the time he come up, be like, look, but I had to express to him, dear, this is important to me. To you. Yep. I, I would appreciate it if you would stop what you're doing so that you can be on time, not leave the church at 12, 1230, because we're supposed to be eating. That's at 1230. So I'm going to need you to leave a little early. And guess what? Because he respects me, because yep. he appreciates me, he did that. And Keep this is sure. and what's important to her Amen. had to become what's important to me. Absolutely. And I had to understand if I'm gonna win and get the victory in my marriage, what's important to her must be important to me. And what's important to me must to be important must be important to her. Absolutely. Watch this. We're still becoming one. Every day you wake Absolutely. up, you're still becoming. You're learning something new. As you age and things change, you're learning something new. But you need to be able, as a husband and wife, to make adjustments. Come let us reason together. Let's work through some things. Let's not always come in. Nobody want to come home and be nagged on all the time. Nobody want to come home and get fussed out all the time. No, you. that's what be your, the king's domain. You're supposed to be to come there and lay back and have you a good time. Not always be walking on eggshells trying to yes. pick up overtime. Y'all know some of y'all picking up overtime. So by the time you get home, your spouse sleep. So you don't have to fuss that night. You know, you don't need to do that. Y'all know them. Come on, I need I need some help in here. Can I hear some real folks? I mean, babe, I'm, I'm picking up some more hours a night. Pray, I'm, you praying, Lord, I pray she sleep when I get home because I don't have time to be fussing tonight. I told her I was going to cut the grass and get the dishwasher fixed, but I ain't had time to do it. And then I'm going to have to hear that again. Lord, make sure she sleep when I get home. And so we want to help you guys understand is that what's important to her had to become important to me and vice versa. And so we had to learn how to work through it. This what lends me to what I discussed a moment ago about being selfish. We want to ask answer some questions about being selfish. Correct. Selfishness is, so, is. Let me excuse me one second. If you have some questions and you want to ask them privately, uh, message Keisha James privately, and then we can answer your questions. Nobody knows what you're asking. That way, we can get some questions answered as well. Okay. I think we have about we have like eleven minutes, and we want to respect the man of God, the woman of God's opportunity for us to minister to you guys. Amen. And now, watch this. Most marriages suffer from selfishness, and say I could have been selfish and said, "Baby, you know." I'm, I'm busy. I'm doing the Lord's work. Um, um, but I had to realize is that me doing the Lord's work is still me making my wife happy. And even because, see, I had to learn this from my man of God. He, my Bishop Hill, you tell me this. He said, son, he says, don't miss abundant life helping everybody else find theirs. And so I had to make the decision that if me and my wife can win, I got to first make the investment with us. And now watch this now. Because of me and my wife relationship, everybody else connected to us get the overflow from that. Absolutely. And so what you got to do in your marriage is start winning with your with your husband and your wife. So now your children can get the overflow of your relationship and everybody else that's connected to you. But you cannot be selfish because selfishness, when you do that, it will cause you to be broken in your life. And then you begin to live a life outside the will of God. You cannot... As a husband or wife, be selfish. Have your own personal motives on what you're trying to accomplish in a relationship. You got to make sure that as, you, as you're going through this journey, that you're, watch this now, making your spouse feel significant. Key word, you about to hear me on this. Your spouse must feel significant. Feel like that you love them, that you honor them, and not that they're just a piece of meat that's laying beside when you want Amen. some. You got to make sure that, hey, you're a part of the decision making. My wife, yeah, baby, ultimately you got to make the decision, but I love to hear what my wife got to say, her input, because what my wife say and how she feel, it matters to me. I need to take in perspective what my wife is saying, even though I'm going to ultimately make the decision, because I want to make sure that we'll always win it. This is why we only spent, listen, if we're going to argue, we have one argument, um, um, one day we argue. And when I say argue and fuss, don't, don't think it's a bad way. People, I don't argue. We men might never argue with you. That's what you ain't living because until <laughs> you ain't living because until you have one good argument, that's how you know the depth or the degree of your marriage. Absolutely. I'm telling you, it, I'm, you got to have one of them arguments. You say, how in the world we recovered from this? Yeah. And then you come through it and now you see that love really worked and never failed. And so we had to realize 
is that when little small things happen during the course of the week, we shelf it. We, we say we mention it and make note, but we shelf it until we have our day of discussion. Me and my wife, we're not going to wake up fussing and fighting every day, dear. I don't like how or that went down talking, or not talking. Know. We're going to talk. Absolutely. And we, Under the same roof and you're not talking. On. You're in People, another room. Come, come on, on you married. I'm sleeping, in the, I'm sleeping in the guest room tonight. The devil is alive. Come on here. And so what, what we do is say, dear, um, I'm, I'm concerned about that. I didn't like how that played out. And so we make sure we talk about this on this day. And so we do that. So why? So everything that we plan, we're going to do during that day, we're still going to do Absolutely. through the rest of the week. Now, when we get to that day, we're not, I'm, I'm, I'm going to teach, I'm going to help you with this fight fair. You got to fight fair. So what we decide we're going to do is that we're only going to deal with what we said we're going to talk about. We're not going to bring up new stuff or old stuff and try to really, and try to hinder the marriage. Some of y'all, you say you want to talk about something, Dean said, no, but last year, but how, how you bring up last year and you told me you forgave me? If you said last year you forgave me, why are you bringing it up now? It's simply because you did not really forgive that individual, your spouse, and you must forgive. We are almost out of time already. Yes. Go ahead, baby. Go ahead. You got a question? Um, no questions. No questions? You don't have no questions? <laughs> no questions? They are responding, saying it's, it's good. They're enjoying Amen. it. Amen. Amen. Any, anybody want to ask a question now? Um, I, and, and then say this with me. Say we need to do better so we can live better. You can put that in the text right there. And better, and I want you to understand that it's very careful, very important that you as a couple do better. When you do better, you think better, you respond better, you act better, and it must be intentional. Absolutely. You must do it intentional. And better is now when your whole desire is to make sure that your marriage is operating in excellence, that you putting the best foot forward. You're not half stepping because your wife is not giving you all that you think they should give you. You still give your wife all that they or your husband all that they supposed to get in regardless of how they're responding because that's how you're going to win your spouse but you cannot sit here and say I'm not going to do it because how you treated me you got to understand that it's the will of God for you to get victory in every area of your life and especially in your marriage God did not put you together and you're not married to fail you're married so you can win a question yes how do you prevent nursing and refreshing before the talk <clears throat> nursing and refreshing okay you talking about like skin again kind of preparing for the conversation. I guess that's what they're asking. Awesome. Okay. Rehearsing. Not, not refreshing, rehearsing. Rehearsing. Oh, rehearsing before the talk. How do you prevent? Oh. That's good. That and is. that's good. And see, this is why this is why we need and the Bible says write the vision, make a plan. We need to write it down because most people like you said, and what we normally do is that we know we're going to have a day we're going to talk. So I'm already, I'm, I'm thinking through this thing and I'm not going to think through it to the degree where I'm not going to be honest with my wife because it may set us back. Because when you learn how to fight fair, you set a criteria and the criteria is that we come together to reason together and work through this, and not, not to condemn. Up stuff. We're not bringing up the past. That's so old. Yes. We're not yeah. doing that. And we're not calling names and we're not going to be disrespectful. We're not call, we, we ain't cussing and all that stuff mm -hmm. because there has to be, I guess the best way to say it, there has to be some ground rules. It has to be set. ground rules. Yeah. You have to set some ground rules so that you guys can go over things appropriately. And that's the whole key is that what we learn is that dear, we're going to talk about it. And this is a conversation. That's why I said fighting fair yes. is that this is our guidelines. You got to set a, a regiment. You got to set guidelines. This is how every time when we come, this is our guidelines. This is how we need to factor in how we're going to answer this. Why? So we don't let the devil get a foothold because if we don't do it the right way and we in our flesh, the enemy going to try to get victory. So what Absolutely. you got to do is say when we communicate it, our desire is to get a victory. So this is what happened. I don't understand it. So if yeah. you're going through it and you're in and, and your mind, you're thinking through the process, that's good. So it should eliminate you saying stuff that's going to derail or hinder the marriage. Also, you know, part of communicating is listening. Yes. So you don't always have to be the one talking. Listening is very, very helpful. That's good. You should listen. That's what I say listen as much and more than you talk. Try, and not try to be the savior yes. or try to fix everything, but just listen. Just listen. I had to learn Absolutely. that. And a lot of times and I just listen. we know the answer yes. or we know how to solve it, we just need a listening ear. Yep. And a lot of times I talked to my, my wife wanted to talk to me and I just listened to her and they said, oh, baby, I got it. All she needed to have was a good listener. And I learned over the last 25 years to be a good listener. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think we had our time. Yes. And I don't want to be, I don't want to dishonor the man and woman of God. So, man of God, 
I'm going to turn to you. If you got any questions or whatever you need us to do, we'll do it. We really enjoyed our sales. I don't know how that time flew that fast, um, but it did. <laughs> but we honor the man and woman of God. Amen. We want to leave them to two minutes and 39 seconds for this meeting go off. But we really appreciate you guys. And make sure, don't let the devil steal your joy. The Bible said the thief coming not only, but the kill, steal, and destroy. But God said, I come to give you life and that life more abundantly. I believe that in this fourth quarter turnaround, your marriage is going to win. God told me to tell you this is a fourth quarter turnaround and your marriage is going to win. He says, Amen. October is the month for the overcomer. Get ready to overcome all obstacles in Jesus' name. Amen. If you like, we can close out in prayer. Minister Pastor God, Pastor. you hear us? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Hey, does anybody have any other questions? Any more questions? We want to give you an opportunity to, to uh, ask questions. Anybody that's got questions or, you know, the thing that I love um, that I heard you guys say, and uh, that was that was the idea that our, our goal is to get a victory. Absolutely. Together, our goal is to get a victory, not yeah. Not you know you won the last the last uh, that's victory, right and it's my turn I'm gonna get you this time next time I'm gonna say this, this. no remember I, one of the known's favorite passages of scriptures is Second Corinthians what is that two ten eleven that says you know we have to forgive and that we are not unaware of Satan's schemes come on and so it is one of his is to uh, is to bring us to the place one of his greatest schemes is to bring us to the place of disagreement. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, uh, you know, I love that statement that y'all made that our our goal in the midst of, of disagreement is to get a victory. Our victory is because it's our victory. We're yes. in this thing together. That's it. And so uh, I, I just thought that was awesome. Awesome. Somebody else may have questions or comment. We need to one. hear from you. That's what I got somebody. Yes. How much time we have a minute? Please I see a on. minute. We good? I yeah. see the yeah, you're good. Okay. okay. Brother Rob, brother Robert has a question. Yeah, and, and my question is: uh, if you go in, if you look at First Corinthians thirteen through thirteen, there's a there's a uh, verse in there that said, "Love protects." Yes. So in in in, in, in this conversation of uh, coming together at a designated time, what can we do to keep the shields down and the conversation going? That's good. That's good. And what we learn how to do. And we still do is learn how to even in the tough conversation, like I said, that we want to win. So what we cannot do and what we should not allow 